Today we are milking a goat. How to milk a goat. And um, yeah, just kind of some tips. This is how you do it. This is how you milk a goat. <laughs> so here's what you need. I feed sweet feed goat milker feed. You need some sort of pail. I like the ones that have a lid on them because it's just easier. And then you need some sort of cream. I use this um, because it's cheap and yeah. Okay, this is Chelsea. She's my French Alpine doe. She's the one we're going to be milking. Um, she's eating alfalfa hay right now because that's what she's on. Uh, milking does should be fed alfalfa, but they also still need grass hay backup fed as well. But alfalfa is necessary to keep the milk production up. The amount of grains that you feed is going to be um, dependent on what breed you have. So I have a bucket of grains right here, and I'm going to go get in position, and then I'll show you how it's done. I don't have anything fancy, which is kind of good to show you. So we get grains, we put cream on her udder, um, that way there's no friction, which causes her pain, we don't want to cause her any pain. Um, a goat that's in pain won't want to be milked and it'll be very difficult to milk. Um, and it can get sores, it's just all around. It's not good for your goat if you're not trying to make sure she's comfortable, okay? Um, the first couple squirts you don't want because you want to clean up that space. Then, she's a really good girl so she stands really still. Um, then we're going to fill this bucket up a little bit and then we'll bring you in closer so you have a better shot of the exact process that's going on you're taking good care of and who's comfortable with you will be easy to milk. She doesn't have to be tied. I just tied her to this post so that if she runs out of feed, she can eat that alfalfa hay. Oh, sorry, that was a chicken. Okay, I'm going to bring you in close for the process now. Okay, since I don't have an assistant, nope, you can't have the milk. I feed the kitties some milk too sometimes, but not today. Nope, not today. Out of here. Okay. Here's how you milk a goat, okay? Okay. This is the udder. This is the top of the teat, okay? You can see that there's the ball here of the udder is up here, and this is the teat that comes down. Ow, kitty, no, kitty. Okay, you grab right there. You should feel that this is completely full of milk, like this pocket you're going to hold, and you're going to pinch at the top, your thumb on your first finger. Come on, kitty. Give me, give me a break. Your thumb and your first finger at the top, you're not going to let any milk come back up into the udder, okay? Your job is to hold it there, to hold it there, and then these fingers go one, two, three, four, like that, okay? So you hold at the top, and then you squeeze down, and you're forcing all the milk out, and you're not letting anything from this go back up into the udder, okay? So hold and squeeze. Hold, and then do, 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 squeeze, okay? Hold, squeeze. Now she's a big goat and she has a really big, a good size udder. So if you have a smaller goat, there's a chance you won't get your whole hand on here. You might have to just use a couple fingers. And if you have too small, you might have to just pinch and slide like this. If you have really little goats, you kind of just pinch and you slide it down. But the point is you hold here really tight with your thumb and your first finger to make sure that the milk that's here does not go back up into the udder and you want to empty the udder out. So, and goats have two sides, so milking off just one side won't empty out all the milk. I just only have one hand available right now for the video. So, if that makes sense for you, let's see. Let me get a fair amount of milk out of there. You will also get really buff hands and forearms from milking the goat. This side, this side is not empty, but I might show you a comparison from behind. Since Chelsea is such an easy girl, 
She's a good one to show. Okay, so that side is mostly empty. See how this is really thin? This side is still really full. See? Okay, so I'll still need to go all the way on this side, and then this is called stripping. You want to do this too. You pull it all the way down, and you get all that milk that's in the end out. Okay, now let me show you from behind. Okay, Chelsea, I'm just going to move this because she's almost done with her grains. I don't want her to step in it when she goes to eat her hay. Okay, so now you can see from behind, this side is still really full. She's like, what the heck are you doing? And the other side isn't, so that side's more empty. Here, Chelsea, let's put your, let's put your hay over here. Where you can stand pretty for the camera. There we go. Thank you. Okay, nope. No kidding. Mostly milk, still very full. This will be very sunken, and the teat will be very thin. Then you'll know you have gotten it all the way out. You also won't have, if you pull down on it, you won't have any milk come out. And that's how you know that you've milked her completely clean. Um, so I'm going to finish milking here, and then I'll show you a completely done goat. Okay, Chelsea has been fully milked. So the udder looks like this. You want it to look like this. You want it to fill empty. And then the ultimate test is you do the strip like this. Oh, I didn't quite get it all the way because there's still some milk coming out. Must have been in a hurry, so I gotta get that out. Whoops. Even seasoned people make mistakes. I've been milking goats for a lot of years now. Okay, so when she's done, done, it'll be like this. It'll be dry. Nothing. Okay, now she's gonna have a little drip of milk on the end, and that's fine. You can't avoid that. But you want this to be completely empty because this, and preferably you can dry this with a towel too, but she's, she's fine. She's going to be fine. But because bacteria can get up in there because there's milk. And if you get bacteria up in there, it's a big deal. You don't want to deal with that. So you get all the milk out and you make sure she's cleaned up. And, um, that's how you milk a goat. If you're looking to buy a goat and you don't really know what to look for for a milk goat, um, Chelsea is a perfect example of what to look for as being she's a french alpine goat and she has really good confirmation and she's a real sweet girl if you want a goat just for your family milk goat um confirmation may not be as important to you but you should always still look for a good goat they have to they have a nice straight top line they have good angles to them and you want to check the udder too and make sure the udder is a good size organ itself but ultimately if you're milking goat for your family you want someone who's just gentle. I can come up here, I can touch Chelsea. I can push her around a little bit and she's just like, whatever, see? She doesn't care, I'm not really shoving her, but you know what I mean, like I can interact with her, I can touch the udder, she's, she doesn't really care. That is the most important thing ever. If you're getting a goat and the people are like, oh yeah, they're out there and you have to go out there and you still can't get close to the goat, don't buy that goat. It'll be so much drama when you milk. You want a goat that you can handle, you know? Chelsea's collar trained. If I said, come on, let's go, she'll leave this bale of hay and walk with me. She's tethered right now, so I'll let her go. But I put a collar on all my goats. They're easier to manage. And you want a goat that's really sweet, really gentle. Huh, I'm not going to steal your food from you. Really sweet, really gentle. Got her tie in the way. Easy to manage girl who doesn't mind being interacted with. Now, if you're getting a girl that's never been milked before, a yearling who's been bred but not been um, milked you're gonna have her be a little bit more like why are you touching my udder these this girl she's milked um i think she's about five actually i'll have to check her papers to see how old she is but i'm pretty sure she's five so she's been milked a bunch so she knows the drill um so if you're getting a new girl who's never been milked before a freshener they're, you know they're freshening goats is what they're called um they're having their first babies and they're being milked now for the first time those girls, they may not like you to touch their udder, but you still want to make sure that they're okay with you handling them. They're okay with being like this, being around them. Um, they're not afraid of you. And what you'll need to do too is you'll need to do a tether. You always do a tether, even if they're sweet, because sometimes something will spook them and the kids start to run off and you just don't want to deal with that. So have a tether. If she's new, do a cross tie like you do with horses, one on each side like this so that she can't move. And then... Um, Get her comfortable with it. And the nicer you are when you milk, the more gentle. See, she doesn't care that I'm touching her udder or her and the teats because she's used to me. She knows I'm not going to hurt her. So the more gentle you are, the better success you will have milking a goat. Buy from a good breeder because um, usually if you buy from a good breeder, you can 
come back and ask some questions. You can be like, hey, what's what's up with this? This girl, Chelsea, she gives me over a gallon when she's first had her baby. And if she gives over a gallon and then I sold her and the person who milks her is only getting a quart a day, that would be something to be concerned about. So it's good to have someone you can communicate with and get a good goat. It's worth it. Goats are crazy. You want a good one. Make your life so much easier. And Chelsea is one of the best goats I've ever had. She's such a sweetheart. So find a goat like Chelsea. <laughs> and good luck milking. It's not that hard. It takes practice. Once you've got it down, once you've got it down, you're good. Good luck, friends.